Hello everyone, I am Pepino, back with Kerbal Space Program, and uh, we haven't had lots of success lately, so with our streak of failure going, I figured why not extend it by doing a mission that's probably bound to fail. I'm going to put a satellite as close in orbit to the sun as I possibly can, so that we can get an up-close look at the star that Kerbin orbits, and uh... If it fails, well, then it does. Uh, we're back with the Kerbnik Deep Space Satellites. Uh, this is the Kerbnik Sun Orbiter. And we are ready to launch in 3, 2, 1. Now, I'm launching here uh, during the daytime, hoping that'll just be the easiest for getting close to the sun. We've already got a satellite orbiting actually fairly close, but I want to get like really really close. I am talking like there's a good chance this thing will fall into the sun and be destroyed kinda close. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now and it's important to study the sun uh, just so we know, you know, for science. We're studying the sun for science. Also, I hope it looks cool up close. I've never actually seen it up close, so we'll take a look at that. So get your sunglasses ready, because we are going to the sun. And we will be right back as soon as I am leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. Okay, our apoapsis is leaving uh, Kerbin's gravity, and now all we gotta do is bring down our sun periapsis to a ridiculously low level. Uh, I'm not sure how ridiculously low just yet, uh, but very, very ridiculously low. That's the plan at least. So we'll, I'm just going to let it go down for a little while. Because uh, I figure if we're going to burn a ship or a satellite up in the sun, I might as well do it after I just miserably failed a couple missions. Uh, part of it is frustration with my other missions. Part of it is I just think it would be cool to uh, put a satellite really close to the sun. And what have I got to lose? if it burns up. It would be like the third failed one in a row. So, that's my thought process behind this. I wanted to do it at some point. Uh, so why not now? Why not now? And our apoapsis is increasing slightly, but our periapsis is getting lower. Yeah, I know I'm, it's more efficient if I bur waited to burn, so I guess I'll just do that. Uh, so let's speed up time here. Here we go. We are out of Kerbin's gravity now. And let's speed it up a little more. And we're going to get to our periapsis first so we can uh, then burn in reverse to bring our apoapsis down as far as our periapsis is and possibly even farther. So let's screw down here. Alright, and we can stop right about there. Alright. Now I gotta do a little burn to get it started. Uh, again, probably could have been a little more efficient with this ship design for uh, its controls, at least. But it's fine, it's fine. Uh, now, we're gonna bring our apoapsis down. substantially here. 
we're going to get it, like I said, ridiculously close to the sun. We're already close, but we want ridiculously close. Alright, so there we go, final stage. Now, come on, gotta get back control of this thing. Alright, come on. Come on. Go the direction I want you to. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Alright. There we go. Now. That is that right there. And now we just gotta wait for our apoapsis to come down. And there's the sun. Uh, now let's see. It's coming down a lot slower than I would like it to. And let's see if we can increase that speed by doing this. Uh, I can't tell if that's actually really increasing it or not. Uh, or, oh wait, I think I was going the wrong way actually. Uh, we want to go this way. That should increase it, right? I would think. Because now we're burning towards the sun as well. Our periapsis is going down as well, and our apoapsis should be going down faster. It's tough to tell, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, we don't have tons and tons of fuel, but we should have enough. Maybe I should go for an elongated orbit that just passes really close to the sun. Um... Let's see, well, we're going through fuel slow enough where I can bring our apoapsis down. Although maybe, maybe just to be sure, I'll get around to our apoapsis. Uh, I'll do a burn um, to get our periapsis down real close. And then, uh, once we do that, we can worry about uh, getting the orbit to be more circular. But I'd be happy with an elongated orbit that passes really close to the sun. Uh, Alright, so we want to stop right about there. Now, turn off our SAS. Do a little burn to get this movement started. And now we gotta spin ourselves around, which will take a little while, but that's fine. Um, now, here we are, spinning this way. And we'll start our burn. And we want to stop ourselves up here. Like right there. Should be bringing our periapsis down very, very quickly. Or as quickly as possible. This engine's not the most powerful, but that's okay because it's fuel efficient. And we don't necessarily need to do this all that quickly. So, how low are we going to get? I mean, I could just crash us into the sun to see what happens to the ship. But it'd be much more fun if I could orbit it very close. Who? Um... Well, I don't know. Let's see how close in we can get. Uh, 
This is going to take a little longer than I expected, so I'll bring you guys back once I've decided how close is ridiculously close. Okay, after a long time, uh, I've reached maybe not quite ridiculously close, but I believe to be uh, a sufficiently close orbit. Uh, I, I think it's sufficient, not necessarily because of how close it is, but just because I'm out of fuel. Uh, we ran out of fuel, didn't have enough to get as close as I would like. So, you know, uh, but it's alright. So, now what we're going to do is uh, warp time around to see how close we can actually get to the sun. I can also detach the final stage here. And since we are going to the sun, or close to the sun, I might as well extend these solar panels just for the heck of it so there they go uh... they should be generating plenty of power not that i actually need it for anything uh... anymore at least but let's see how close we can get to the sun here let's just watch here All right. So that's that's mm, that's fairly close. I mean, it's not as close as I wanted to get for sure. Uh, but you know, it we yeah we could have gotten a lot closer. Let's put it that way. Uh, but this is still the closest we've ever had anything to the sun. And if you look at our meters per second, we're going really really fast right now. Uh, let's check some of our instrumentation if we can. Let's zoom in here and check our thermometer. Well, it's still negative uh, 202 degrees because of the fact that we're still out in space, so I guess it's not actually that hot right here which is kind of weird um, although they may not have actually added that in yet or maybe it would actually be cold there but I don't know I doubt it uh, we're pretty darn close to the sun so I doubt it's cold but I don't know maybe maybe I don't know we'll see uh, so that will bring our mission to a close and we'll leave this little guy to orbit uh, not the most successful mission. A lot of our missions really haven't been lately. And I have something big planned for a manned mission. But I would like to do one other thing first. So, not this episode, but next episode. Er, sorry. Not the next episode, but the one after that. We got a big surprise planned. Uh, which I may talk a little bit more about next episode but uh, the guys back at the space program have been working on something for a long time because we've done a couple years worth of uh, of missions unmanned so now uh, they've had lots of time to work on stuff and they're ready to unveil what they've been doing so we'll be back and we'll save that for in a couple episodes. So, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Bye bye Okay, everyone. I am Pepino, back with Kerbal Space Program. And uh, we are going to end our recent string of failures by putting this probe on EVE. We are going to land the probe on EVE. Uh, Let's see. That's actually close to the right time to launch. Close enough, anyway. Uh, we should have plenty of fuel for this. Uh, and we weren't actually very successful putting a probe on Duna. We were horribly unsuccessful putting one on Lathe. 
and we were even not very successful orbiting close to the sun. Uh, and we're planning a big manned mission, but it's not quite ready yet, so we will return to manned missions next episode in a very big way. Uh, but, for right now, we have got to uh, get this probe on EVE successfully. And we're going to do it. I got a feeling. <sighs> Alright. So, we should be able to do this. Whew. Deep breath. Prepare. We are not going to fail this time. I have checked. Everything should happen in the right order. The problem is, there's not really a way to test this without launching it. Uh, to make sure it's going to completely work. But it should. Everything should work. Right? Well, that's what I said the last couple times, too, but... Alright, this time it's going to. It's gonna. I promise. Alright. Launching in three, two, one. Alright. There we go. Takeoff is working well, as always. Uh, it's never, never really the problem for this ship to take off. Uh, it's just that darn landing that always seems to get us. And so, I am going to uh, just once again, like usual, oh hey, there's the moon coming up over the horizon. Uh, I am just going to, like usual, bring you guys back uh, once we are leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence so you don't have to sit here and watch uh, our apoapsis rise for a couple minutes because that gets real old uh, so be right back okay our apoapsis is uh, rising quickly and uh, we have Eve set as a target and Eve is right there. So now, we gotta just bring this down slowly. And hopefully get an encounter eventually. We may have to orbit a time or two. Uh, but that's not a huge problem. So we'll just bring it down till we get the target markers. Um, gotta be pretty close to that stage. There we go. Alright, well, I'm gonna leave it right there, and then I will orbit around for a while, and I will bring you guys back. Uh, well, we just had something happen. Not sure what. Anyway, I'll bring you guys back. Uh, when I think I have a good chance at an encounter. Okay, I'm doing a burn now. That is uh, bringing our closest approach even closer. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, I wonder... I was gonna slow myself down, but actually, that's wrong. I need to speed myself up. What am I doing? Uh, I am not thinking. Not thinking. Playing late at night tends to do this. I'll have these little brain farts uh, every couple missions. But, okay, whatever. We will spin all the way around. Unfortunately, I have to do a little burn to get spinning. But,. Uh, we'll get all the way around. I haven't used RCS yet, like I said, but that that will change uh, coming up very soon. Uh, and again, next episode is going to be a big step for us in the Kerbal Space Program. And so hopefully you guys will uh, check it out. It'll be a 25th episode special. I uh, Again, I can't tell you what it is yet. Uh, you'll probably be able to guess from the title of the next video when you see it. So look forward to that. Um, Alright. 
and bringing ourselves in real close here. This is good, very good. Oh, getting coming in a little hot. Getting pretty close. That. There we go. And we've got our Eve periapsis. Um, our periapsis disappeared, and I'm not sure why. Uh, that's a pretty short encounter, though. I wonder if I can... You know what? No. Yeah, it'll be long enough for me to get into an orbit, so I'm not going to mess with it right now. Uh, so now it is time to time warp until we get all the way around there, and I'll bring you back when we do. Okay, coming around now. And here's where we'll have our encounter in three days and 20 hours. Counting down quickly here with time warp. Our periapsis showed back up. Uh, it's pretty far out, but we can work on that once we get our encounter. Well, what happened? Oh, there it is. I'm not sure why this keeps changing like that, but that's fine. I'm just gonna not worry about it. Well, um, all right, I guess it's gonna take a little longer to get to the, well, nope, all right. It, keep, it kept changing for whatever reason, I don't even know. All right, now, let's turn off our SAS and start this burn slowly should start to slowly bring down our periapsis once we get into the right spot there we go that should pick up in speed then and we could bring our periapsis way way down and there we see our satellite we have orbiting and we'll bring our periapsis down really far and we might as well bring it down just about all the way still going down. I'm doing this slowly just because if something gets messed up I don't want to be burning too much in the wrong direction. Um, Alright. Yeah, this is going to work very nicely. Let's bring it down so our periapsis is right around there, that should be plenty to enter the atmosphere. And now our periapsis is very close, actually, uh, for space terms at least. So we'll speed up time till we get there. And all right. Now we are pretty close. Uh, so we've got the landing probe and plenty of fuel. So let's detach this stage right there. That didn't do anything to our periapsis. Let's Give a little boost just to get out of there, out of that mess of debris. That took our periapsis down a bit, but that doesn't matter too much. And now let's do a little time warp until we get down farther. Oh, that was fast. 
All right. Don't want to get down too quickly. All right. Now we are coming in for landing. And I'll zoom way in to see here. Our periapsis has it where we, ooh, we're going to be close whether we land over land or ocean. I feel like we should be able to land on the land. Uh, it seems like we'll be able to do that. So, let's do a tiny little burn to start the movement on this. And then that should continue. Our periapsis is still basically in the same spot. Uh, all I want to do is get ready, get in the right position. Hopefully this detaches this time. Uh, that was the problem last time we were this close, but it shouldn't be a problem this time because last time it detached just fine other than the fact that it was too soon. So it should detach. Now, I just hope the probe isn't like ripped apart or anything crazy like that during uh during entry. That's the only concern I really have at this point as we're down getting down closer to the surface. All right. Now there's the purple atmosphere of Eve. Everything is very, very purple. Lots of purple craters filled with some sort of liquid. I don't know if it's water. It could be, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. We'll have to see once we get down there. Hopefully this works. I really hope this works. All right. Let's detach that, and we have separation. Now we'll deploy the parachute, so it'll deploy as soon as we enter, uh, as soon as we enter the atmosphere. Let's face this in the right direction. And everything is going purple, which, yep, that means we are entering the atmosphere. Literally, the air is purple, it seems like. Everything is starting to shine a purple glow which can't be healthy if we had uh, Kerbals trying to land this so it's a good thing we don't. Uh, now let's deploy our landing legs for our probe and hope that this parachute does its job correctly. We're coming in pretty hot so it's gonna need to slow down quite a bit. There goes all our debris flying by as we slow down. There's the parachute. And we're slowing down s substantially now. Down below 2,000 meters per second. Down to 1,500 meters per second. Down to 1,000 meters per second. We're slowing down quickly enough and we're still high enough up. The atmosphere here is thicker than on Kerbin. Uh, we learned that already based on how high the parachute deployed, like the altitude, and the good thing is we're not going to land in the ocean! That's terrific, because uh, this probe would not do well in liquid. I'm just hoping it does somewhat well on land and doesn't break apart, which eh, eh, is still yet to be seen. Again, the whole not being able to test thing hurts us. Uh, so we've got the landing legs deployed. And we're slowing down now a lot. We're at about 200 meters per second, still uh, 17,000 meters above the surface. So everything is looking good. This is looking as good as it could possibly look right now. So, again, 
Uh, don't want to jinx it. Really don't want to, but it's looking very, very good. Uh, here's our probe slowly descending now. Uh, I hope, really hope, that when the parachute fully deploys, it's not so much of a sudden drop in speed that this stuff falls off. Which could happen. That's sort of what happened last time, except for the whole thing fell off. Which was good. Because, uh, it didn't... It didn't... We didn't want the whole thing to go with. But... Alright. Come on. Come on, little probe. Below 100 meters per second. Still, uh, n almost 9,000 meters above the surface. You can do it. You can do it, little probe. You can do it. Come on. I'm not going to uh, warp time anymore, by the way, because that can throw off uh, your connections with things, and that, that would be a disaster if a glitch stopped this from working. So, we may have done this. Come on. Come on. Getting close now. Uh, parachute should fully deploy soon, I would think. There it goes. It stayed together. It stayed in one piece. Yes. Uh, yes, we are going to land a probe. Seemingly successfully. Uh, yes, 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 yes. At, coming in at 6.5 meters per second, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we are still nearly 5,000, or, or 5,300 meters above sea level, but, uh, we are going to land on a mountain, it looks like, so that doesn't matter. What matters is how close we are to the ground, and, uh, it doesn't look like we're that far. Here we are coming in for landing. It's a very small probe. Like, it's absolutely tiny. Uh, that was the goal. I basically made it about as small as I could so that it'd be easy to land it theoretically. Oh, here we go. Prepare for touchdown. Preparing for touchdown. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! 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 Kerbal Space Program, first probe landed on another planet successfully without breaking or shattering or destroying itself. Alright, let's extend our solar panels, start up our communication satellite, and hope that they don't bump into each other. No, they look fine. Alright, now... We've got our probe set up. Let's take a couple quick readings, and then we can call it an episode. Where did we put... There's our instruments. Temperature is very hot. 125.47 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, too hot to live on for Kerbals. Uh, accelerator doesn't matter. We can actually turn that off. Uh, barometer. So this has a very thick atmosphere. Uh, and the gravity is greater uh, than on Kerbin. So that's the information we need about Eve. And now we have a probe here. Uh, I'm still not sure what Eve is made of. Some purple mineral for the land and some weird purple gas in the air and some weird purple liquid in the ocean. The whole thing is purple. But we did it. I am jacked. Uh, we are right in the middle of land, which is what we wanted. We don't want to be in the water, like I said. We're up on a mountain. Oh, this is just amazing. So we zoom in and right there the first probe we have successfully landed. So thank you all for watching. Oh wait, one more feature I forgot. Lights! We have lights that don't really matter because it's bright on Eve right now. We could wait until night, I suppose. 
Let's warp time till night. Whoa, whoa, we warped it too much. Warp time till night. There we go. See? There. That's where the lights come in handy. So that's what our probe looks like at night. Not actually really that handy. We don't need the lights too much. Ooh, look, green. That was a really ADD comment. Uh, it looks kind of like the northern lights, except for it's like the whole atmosphere. That's pretty cool. So apparently the sunsets on Eve are green. Alright, anyway. Enough learning about Eve. Uh, it's time for me to head back and work on our big 25th episode special, which you guys will see more of next episode. So thank you guys for watching, and please join us next time. Bye-bye.